So this is the Sony FDR X3000. It is a 4K action camera and it is competing with GoPro right now. I really like it because it has stabilization and you don't really need to use a gimbal. It really works really well if you know how to use it. I've been using this thing every single day for a few months now and it's a little quirky. If you know how to use it, you can get some really awesome footage, but if you don't know how to use it, the footage it looks really bad, honestly. So it's, it's really tough. It takes some skill to know how to use this thing properly. The first thing we need to talk about is the compression rate. This camera can handle 100 megabytes per second at 4K, but I found that the, the footage looks horrible. <laughs> distortion it does have technically 4k pixels but there are so many pixels that are changing so rapidly in fast-moving scenes that it looks it looks bad <laughs> If you're filming a very static scene and the background doesn't change much or you're driving and there's a very large background, um, you can use the 4K and it looks phenomenal, absolutely. But if it's fast moving, you cannot use 4K at all. So the best settings that I have found to shoot with this camera are 1080 at 30 frames per second. 60 frames per second does work well, but when I'm shooting with this, I'm not looking for that. I'm not, I'm not going to slow anything down and I don't want super fluid mo movement. I want to have the compression. I want every detail that I can in every frame that I make. So 30 frames per second with 1080 works perfectly. But keep in mind when you film at 1080 and 30 frames per second, the bit rate is 50 megabytes megabytes per second. On YouTube, when you upload that 1080 video, it can only do 16 megabytes per second. So it's going to be distorted. And that's the problem. You, you will, you know, put it down on 1080 and then you upload it on YouTube and you're like, wow, this looks disgusting. And so the way to fix that, if you guys are using Premiere Pro, is simply export your 1080 video as a 4K video, and then you can have a higher compression rate on YouTube. The next thing that we need to go over is stabilization and mounting this thing. The best thing I have found is this stick. You can hold it right here and then you can move it down here and it works so well. If you make this really long and you hold it right in the middle, it's practically like one of those little gimbal sticks, but you know, less weight. And there's enough weight down here so that it actually stabilizes it. And it looks really good. But if you were to mount this directly to the unicycle, it looks horrible because you have vibration on the camera. And this stabilizer works really well with handheld vibration like just me floating around a little bit it can figure it out and compensate really well but this kind of stuff it doesn't do so well with it still compensates very well absolutely but it's not as much so if you hit a bump and you have this attached to a bicycle it's gonna bump no matter what but you just have to have it kind of stabilized like this the final step we're gonna have to do some post-production work this would look good i mean i just took this clip the other day and most people seeing this would say hey this is a great shot it's at 1080 it's 30 frames per second there's a lot of color it's it looks like a good shot but I'm telling you right now that this is not good you need to do post-production work on every clip that comes out of the Sony FDR X3000 and so what we're gonna do is go up to color or whatever you're using for color grading post-production work and you're gonna have to pull up the Lumetri scopes you need this every single time because maybe your monitor's off or something's going on. You need to be able to see the scope to see what's actually occurring. And see, right now we can see that this, there's a lot of color that's way too high. And every time I shoot with the Sony, even in low light conditions, it always overexposes it. So what you want to do is take the exposure and drop it down and watch this until all of the colors 
go below the 100 line right here, or 255 in this example. See right here, we can see the blue and then the red right here. Everything's below this line. And this now instantly looks way better. But it's missing something. You can see that it's, it needs some contrast and a little bit extra. So let's mess with this. First, I go to the blacks, and then we see if it's on the line down there. And this one needs it right about there and then the whites we can add a little bit maybe no we don't have much to play with with the whites at all after that exposure setting so now we're going to mess with the contrast get a little bit higher and then add a little bit of saturation not much you don't want to ruin your shots it will make it look horrible but look at the difference it is just so vibrant and so much better and let's turn this off just to show you what it looks like before see this before and after it just it brings out the colors so much it looks so much more real the the sky is blue the grass is green So yeah guys, I hope this video helps. These are the basics. There might be some other things I could think of. It will look so much better. You will love it.